Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this video we are going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 12 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. And first we are going to talk about South and Donetsk direction. The Russian sources published the video of how they were clearing and attacking the Ukrainian positions, Ukrainian trenches in this area. As a result of clashes the Russians managed to significantly improve their positions, most likely the Russians were attacking the positions of the 72nd or 79th Brigade. As a result of clashes, the Ukrainians were completely defeated and were forced to fall back. So, once again, summarizing everything according to the video we've just seen, the Russians were moving from the south in the north in direction. So, the Russians were moving along the eastern line and the Russians managed to capture this territory. Obviously, significant progress from the Russian side and currently the distance between edge Russian positions and T0524 road was reduced till 1 km and 330 meters, which is already nothing. Furthermore, different mappers have confirmed this information as well. The only difference that different mappers are saying that the Russians were moving along Balka Saloninka, along this river, but not from the south in direction. Anyway, sooner or later we're going to receive additional updates and we will understand what exactly was happening there. Now let's move further and let's talk about Krasnogorovka. We haven't received received a lot of updates, just one important report from pro-Ukrainian mappers. And as you can see, according to pro-Ukrainian source Deep State, the, the Ukrainians abandoned their positions inside of Krasnogorovka completely. Now, at least in the central part of the city, we're not talking about the residential area in the north and in the northwest. The Ukrainians left their positions, the Russians are about to finish the clearing and to complete the battle for the main part of the Krasnogorovka. Now let's move further. We have additional updates from Pakrovsk direction. The Ukrainians suffer significant problems in this area. They currently they don't know for sure how exactly to stop the Russians. During the previous 24 hours, the Russians conducted few more Iskander strikes and av aviation bomb strikes on Ukrainian positions. As a result of attack, few more temporary positions of armed forces of Ukraine were destroyed. Furthermore, the Ukrainians are so desperate, so they begin bringing and bringing the western weapon to the line of combat contact. In this video we can see a few HIMARS systems that were redeployed by the Ukrainians as close as possible to the line of combat contact with the purpose to, of course to attack the Russian forces but HIMARS systems were discovered and as a result of Iskander strike the Ukrainians lost western machine. As for the situation in the ground we have very interesting reports from the village of Visola. If you remember during the previous 20 for 48 hours the Russians managed to improve their positions and basically the Russians managed to semi-encircle Vistola from the from the east, from the southeast, from the south and from the southwest. And today, according to the latest update of pro-Ukrainian mappers, the Russians answered this part of the village and captured this territory completely. Currently, there is a securing operation. The Ukrainians were forced to fall back due to the risk of being encircled and most likely the Russians will continue the pressure and will force the Ukrainians to fall back from the village completely towards the next uh, city in the town, Grodovka. So this is the first victory, biggest victory of the Russian forces along the first defense belt of Pokrovsk direction. As for Zhelanya, the Russians stopped moving further along the railways. There is the, during the previous 24 hours were no updates regarding progress to the railway station, but as we discussed in the previous videos, the Russians during the previous night were trying to improve their positions along the fields and the tree lines to the northern part of Zhelanya to the cemetery. So these were, these were the roads of attack of armored forces of Russian Federation during the previous night. Once again, as we discussed in the previous updates, currently the Russians are trying to improve their positions and to capture these fields. This will allow them to establish complete control over the stronghold that located further in the southeastern direction and to cut supply and then to, to defeat the Ukrainians completely in this direction and to force them to fall back from Zhelanya. Now let's move a little bit further. The Ukrainians also stated about additional progress and changes on the ground between Nova Alexandrovka, Lazovatska and Vazdvizhenka. The Russians are getting closer and closer to Vazdvizhenka itself. Now let's move further. We have additional updates from Tarecku, New York agglomeration. During the previous night, the Russians have improved their positions significantly 
significantly. We can say that based on this configuration of the front line, the Ukrainians were completely defeated in the city of Zalizne and were forced to fall back. During the previous night, the Russians published the video how the Ukrainians made few series of counter-attacks trying to force the Russians to fall back. The video was geolocated. The video shows additional progress of the armed force of Russian Federation. As a result of that, this attempt, the Ukrainians were completely defeated and those who managed to survive fall back towards Taretsk. So this is the situation in this area. Let's take a look at this map once again. So according to different mappers, the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to establish complete control over the Pioneer Avenue. So they captured this significant number of buildings, high-rise buildings, telling the truth. And it is very weird why the Ukrainians haven't shown even a single resistance, even any resistance to the Russians. They lost this high-rise building area. They lost a lot of buildings that uh, the Ukrainians might use. Uh, the real defense belt is a real stronghold, but no resistance from the Ukrainian side. Furthermore, according to information we have, the Russians finished the clearing of the Pivnichne Citadel. Just one building left under complete Ukraine control. We're talking about this building that uh, with the icon, with the sign of Nova Poshta, uh, the, uh, every single building in the Citadel was captured by the Russians during the previous few days of clashes. And now the Russians are able to move further towards the uh, coal mine by the name of uh, Pivnichne or the Northern. So significant progress. The territory was already split into several parts. Zalizny, Pivnichne, Teresk are the separate defense belts. And now it's going to be much more easier for the Russians to handle with every single one separately. Now let's move to Chesov Yar. Very interesting reports and updates we received during the previous night from this direction as well. Before we start making the previous video, we have already received some reports that the Russians managed to cross Seversky Danes Donbass Canal and that the Russians managed to improve their positions significantly. And today we got real geolocation, not geolocations, but some updates from different mappers according to information from the ground of how the Russians managed to improve their positions. So, as you can see, according to information we have, the Russians captured Mariupolskaya Street and the Russians uh, captured Krivonosa Street. So, these two streets were captured by the Russians and according to different sources uh, during the previous day and by this morning, the main clashes were taking place along Sirova Street. So, let's add Sirova Street to the map. So, according to information we have, the, mo the most fierce and the current clashes were taking place are taking place exactly for this line, Sirova Street. Street. Everything to the right of this red li black line is already under complete Russian control. Furthermore, the sources are saying that the Russians crossed the river in the vicinity of Kalinovka and then the Russians began moving in the southern direction, basically uh, collapsing the Ukrainians, uh, defeating the Ukrainians along the main defense belt that goes along Seversky Danis Donbass Canal. And when the Ukrainians realized that they lost the entry point, they just began to withdrawing their positions in the western direction, leaving their uh, fortifications and the strongholds behind without any uh, without any problems or something like this. So let's take a look at different mappers. We have different updates. We have different mappers. So this is the situation. Obviously, this is significant progress of armed force of Russian Federation. And now they will try, of course, after they, uh, the, the Russians are digging in deeper, they will start moving further in the western direction. And there is a first First central Chasavyar citadel. This is the point probably that the Ukrainians will try to use uh, for to slow down the Russians. There is a forest uh, to the uh, southwest of uh, Russian nearly. Uh, created foothold there is industrial zone with high-rise building area so this is the citadel um, the russians will be forced to fight a uh, pretty long time uh, maybe not maybe yes who knows uh, sometimes the russians are taking under control the citadels very fast sometimes they are forced to spend months until they are able to get just one building like the situation in volchansk before russian offensive operation they made the massive fpv drone clearing and 
strikes inside of the Kalinovka, trying to um, maybe uh, fo change the Ukrainian focus to the northern part, uh, forcing them to think that the Russians are going to move in this direction. But um, despite the number of FPV drone strikes, the Russians start began moving in completely different area. So this is the situation in Chasavyar. Uh, during the next few days, we're going to receive additional updates, and this is going to be another area of very heavy pressure from the Russian side. During the previous night, we haven't received anything additional about the Russian breakthrough on the line Zelizhnyanskaya Slavansk in Sivir's direction. Just a regular activity. The Russians were bombing the Ukrainian forces with artillery. The Russians were bombing the Ukrainian warehouses, ammo depots. It looks like artillery preparation, but it's very difficult to understand where and exactly the Russians are planning to start moving. Now let's talk about Kharkiv direction. We have additional updates. And something weird and something strange is happening in the northern Vovchansk. The pro-Ukrainian sources published the video of how they were bombing the Russian forces in the most eastern part of the aggregate plant. And this is very interesting video. The Ukrainians began adopting. This is very interesting because uh, the, the, in the first stage of the special military operation, the Ukrainians had just one superiority. And we are talking about the number of FPV drones. But this superiority was was destroyed was broken by the russians uh, they managed to create significant number of electronic warfare equipment of different types and the ukrainians lost their superiority but now the ukrainians as you can see began adopting and they decided to start using the ground drones so the difference between ground drones and between fpv drones that are flying is that uh, these ground drones is almost invisible for russian electronic warfare equipment and the russians can't do anything with them yes they are much slower they can't use ground drones let's say to attack infantry the only purpose you can use the ground drones is to probably destroy some positions some strongholds and then to begin assault operations and uh, this is the first video for the previous few days of how the ukrainians were using these ground drones so very interesting and this is something new in ukrainian tactics now let's talk about Kharkiv itself the russian sources published the video how they managed to discover the consecration of different equipment in Kharkiv airfield military equipment that Ukrainians were using to control the Russian let's do control the sky to control the Russian aircrafts in this area and as a result of uh, strikes missile strikes most likely the Ukrainians lost probably one radar or something like this or even more maybe some even warehouse with missiles so the most important part from this video is that the Russians having no risk are able to fly about Kharkiv without any resistance and without any uh, air defense from the Ukrainian side. Now let's talk about other different updates that we received during the previous night. Zelensky, due to very critical situation, began seeking for another peace conference, of course, with the participation of Russia. He, he is planning to start the next peace uh, summit in the end, the late of November, most likely after the end of the president elections in the United States of America. Maybe he still believes that uh, Democrats will win and he will receive additional help, maybe not so he's waiting obviously for the results of the president elections but the problem is that nobody knows for sure where exactly the russians are going to be by the end of november where exactly the line of combat contact is going to go furthermore we have additional updates about the yes the ambush of wagner in Mali. according to information we have lots of ukrainian volunteers and mercenaries were spotted in the same area and they were training those um part those gorilla forces who ambushed the russians we have very interesting report from the russian sources according to information we have during the previous few days it was confirmed that the russians managed to bring down ukrainian mig-29 at a range of 230 kilometers with air-to-air -air missile so this is probably one of the most important update the russians do have the missiles within a range of 213 kilometers and this is the first one of the 
steps the Russians conducted to have complete superiority with the with the clashes with Ukrainian F-16s. From the same topic, we got additional update from uh, the Crimea. According to information we have, the Russians conducted the series of exercises with S-400 missile. The Russians launched S-400 missile from the airfield in the vicinity of Jankoy, and this missile landed in Kriminchuk. So this is the Kriminchuk. So let's calculate the distance. According to the Russian sources, the S-400 missile was launched from the south, and this missile landed in the vicinity of Kriminchuk, and the distance of this missile is around 400 kilometers. So the Russians successfully tested air defense that can cover 400 kilometers. Significant, obviously. This will allow the Russians to uh, secure uh, the sky above Ukraine even more against the Ukrainian F-16s. And the most important update, the Russians finished the uh, preparation and military exercises with new Iskander-1000 missile. This is the um, land to land missile Iskander that can uh, bypass around 1000, 1000 kilometers. This is obviously very important achievement by the Russian military um, engineers and very soon according to the Russians they are planning to start using this in the, in the area of the special military operation. And that's it for the short video. A military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye bye.